Jim Pallas is a prize-winning American artist and a pioneer in electronic interactive art. This work, titled Law, shows his wit, insight, and creative perspective. It is the perfect artwork for a legal setting, a law school, library, courthouse, or major law firm. Here's Jim Pallas describing the sculpture and its behavior. It is in the form of a shrine. It stands nine feet tall and consists of a base, a chair with a heart, and a sword, and a canopy. The three feet square base is an assemblage of objects associated with the law, primarily books, but also a typewriter, rubber stamps, phones, adding machines, video and audio tapes, a camera, slides, movies, computer discs, jail bars, a chain and locks, a dictaphone, cubby holes, mailboxes, money, bonds, certificates, business trophies, pencils, pens, paper clips, four clocks, one on each of the skulls sculptures four sides, and a file of miscellany. In addition, there are objects of more symbolic meaning, a compass, scales, an eye and a tooth, casts of open and closed lips, roots, bones, a target, a counter, a baited trap, and live ivy. These and other objects are epoxied into a block five feet high. This block is capped by a slab of white marble. A juror's chair sets on the marble. The chair is occupied by a heart. Leaning against the chair is a sword. These three symbols, chair, heart, and sword, sit above the other accoutrements of the law. A canopy of keys is suspended from the ceiling above the chair. Four rubber stamps, innocent, guilty, yes, and no, hang from the corners of the canopy. The sculpture contains a working computer whose screen and keyboard are visible on the front of the sculpture. If no visitors are present, the screen is blank. When a visitor is detected, a light illuminating the keyboard winks on and the computer displays photos, documents, screens, texts, maps, charts, and graphics. The program displays images as it moves through information in a random walk related to the law moving in a connected way from subject to subject, but sometimes following surprising turns. For instance, it may be displaying official portraits of U.S. presidents from George Washington through John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, sometimes substituting images of presidents on currency for their official portraits. It may choose to leave the presidential sequence by jumping from a Matthew Brady photo of Abraham Lincoln to a photo taken about the same time of Harriet Tubman, staring warily at the camera. That may be followed by faces and biographies of African Americans involved in civil rights, including Frederick Douglass, W.B. Du Bois, and Martin Luther King, Jr. It may segue through to Thurgood Marshall and to an encyclopedia description of the Supreme Court. It may continue this with a biography of Justice Antonin Scalia and then appear to use a modem to access the Internet. Log on to Lexis Legal Service and look up a speech on, say, constructionists. Other times it may display video images of parts of the sculpture itself. For example, a portrait of Charlemagne may be followed by an image of the sword leaning against the chair. Or the open and closed lips may precede an image of Thomas Paine. Sometimes it's difficult to see the legal content, as when the computer is juxtaposing Mickey Mouse with Gutenberg's press and mixing England's Queen Anne and the statute that bears her name with indigenous peoples. But the program will show a legal connection. It may connect tribal cultures folklore with pharmaceutical development and recombinant DNA. It becomes clear that the issue is about intellectual property in the marketplace. The artwork currently uses only a small fraction of the system's capacity. The artist might consider collaborating with the eventual owner to create more features that would invite visitor participation. For example, a feature could be developed that would allow visitors to choose pathways for the program to follow. It could be individualized to present specific issues or personalities. This fascinating sculpture is unlike any other. It is available for purchase for the right location. Contact me if you're interested in having this unique artwork enrich your environment.